circular walk to the village of Wheelock and uh, back to the boat obviously <laughs> and it's uh, really windy really windy it's uh, been gusting apparently up to about 50 miles an hour I think uh, it felt more like that in the night it was the boat was rocking around and um, at the moment we're being yeah. sheltered by this railway track which I think is the uh, main line from London, Manchester and further north. So it's made quite a nice little path, isn't it? So we're going yeah. off of the canal for a little bit and just up from Wheelock I discovered um, a very nice farm shop the other day and somebody has sent us some money to get some coffee and well I cake. think it was chips but we're going to get cake <laughs> in the uh, farm shop to take back to the boat because obviously we can't still sit in anywhere and eat. Thanks, um, Marion. So yeah, we'll go back to the boat for coffee and cakes when we've finished our walk. Lovely. Mm. <laughs> and we're nearly at Wheelock. There is a service station for boaters with a very nice clean shower block. And uh, we almost, it's about a mile and a half walk, but we almost brought our towels out just to stand in the shower for half Love. an hour, didn't we? <laughs> but that might happen tomorrow. So, uh, <laughs> We did go and see the boat and uh, still uh, <laughs> work to be done, that's all I can say. But uh, the quality of the workmanship, Fran, is just outstanding, I have and to say. We're driving them mad because we keep thinking of things, even at this stage. <laughs> we suddenly realised in the middle of the night, or I did, that we'd got no 12 volt charging sockets for our phones. And we don't want to put the inverter onto the train. We don't want to put the inverter on just to charge phones and things. So yesterday we suddenly announced, can you put some 12 volt <laughs> sockets in for our And they're just going to do it for us. They're, they're so good with Managed that. They just they're squeeze them in, yeah. Quite patient with us with things like that, they haven't are. they? <laughs> so um, all, all being well, a couple of weeks, end of the month, and uh, we'll be able to take oh. charge of her. And it isn't too bad, as we've said before, we still can't officially move. Um, so hopefully now, by the time we get the boat, we'll just be a week away um, from lockdown, letting us move again. Yeah. So brilliant train. Yeah. <laughs> right, let's get this walk done then. Quarter of a mile down the track, and you've got to admire their determination to dump their rubbish. How they've got here to do that, who knows? And all along here, beautiful, ouch, prickly <laughs> gorse um, bushes and flowers. And I know that you can do things with gorse flowers. Um, yeah, as soon as we get back, I'm going to get, get the books out and check. We're going to be here for a few days, so um, maybe be some experimentation with gorse flowers. <laughs> but it's not mushrooms, is it? <laughs> I 
has a boat just come out of this lock. Left the gates open at the top for him, but uh, he's rolling his sleeves up. He's got some plastic bags around his prop. Yep, so sure enough, poor bloke had a big plastic bag stuck round his propeller and uh, he got off, took a picture of it and then proceeded to go off on his boat and uh, leave it on the side of the canal. So uh, I guess it's my job to go and pick it up for him. Well, we're back in Middlewich. <laughs> we seem to have spent the whole of the year <laughs> in Middlewich nearly. We have, and uh, off for a walk into town to get some shopping. Left the dogs behind. They have had a nice long walk this morning yeah. already. And uh, went to see the boat, didn't we, last week? Yes. It was looking really good. It's just a Finishing touches and the engine to go in now. Well, the engine actually arrived as we were there, didn't we? It, it did, blah, blah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it did have an engine in, but they took it out because they had an emergency on another boat months ago. <laughs> so anyway, we've got an engine. Yeah. Um, this is the first day I've been out for days, isn't it? Yeah, it's been a bit of a tough time, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, a week after my dad's funeral. My sister was taken ill and uh, was admitted into hospital and sadly she'd had a stroke and um, unfortunately a week later she died uh, from a massive stroke. So it's just been a tricky time and being on the boat and obviously not having a car it's not easy to get access well, you can't go really and see people now anyway, but you were able to go and see Carol, yeah, fortunately, fortunately you? I was I got there the day before she died. I managed to get a car, hire a car, and uh, whiz over to Chesterfield um, and see her. But yeah, rotten times. <laughs> really so rotten we've, times. we've been a little bit quiet, obviously. Um, just coming to terms with everything, really. Yeah. And it's, you know, has taken off the edge. It should be such exciting times now. And, you know, spring is well upon us and we should be on top of the world. But unfortunately, yeah, you know, we're a bit in the doldrums, a bit aren't distracted. We? Yeah. But everything's fine. You, you know, you just have to deal with these things, don't you? And I do indeed. So that's... The shame of it is that Carol, Rich's sister, was so looking forward to coming and spending oh, yeah. time on the new boat with us. She loved what we were doing, loved the life we're living. Loves watching the videos. <laughs> uh, if you remember Nigel, her husband was uh, my brother-in-law that came and helped us paint the boat a couple of years ago when it was out of the water. So, uh, <laughs> loves your mate. <laughs> Thank you. 
Anyway, on a brighter note, <laughs> it's what is it today, Francis? Uh, it's equinox. Um, I think the actual moment of the spring equinox was about nine o'clock this morning ish. Yeah. Um, so now we're on that period of time when the days are actually longer than the nights. And boy, have we noticed it. The blackbird is singing at about four o'clock in the morning already. And, and it's really uh, getting light. light come 5.30 yeah. now, isn't it, in the morning, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, still, as you can see, it's still cold. Um, but yes, we're, you know, back, as you say, back in, in Middlewich. We won't go from Middlewich now until hopefully the boat's ready. We're no. going to stay here. Yeah. Um, however long it takes, we're here now. And this is our little walk. We've got lovely little cut through walk to the town to get our shopping. And uh, that's us really, isn't it, for a while? Yeah, it is. Uh, we've got nothing much to say or show you really. I'm gonna do a recipe, yeah. one of Fran's. So uh, it's, it's a great little dairy-free, egg-free cake that um, Rich loves me making. So I've decided it's about time that he started doing the cooking. And this is gonna be the first recipe to go on the website, isn't it? Yeah. So I did promise some last time and I didn't get round to it, obviously. You know, we've been up in the air. Now the website's going really well. We're getting lots of uh, visits to this site and lots of comments. And uh, everything we put up to sell goes within <laughs> you know within an hour doesn't it yeah you know? yeah so it's going really well so take a look it's down the bottom of the page there so that's us done isn't it i haven't got enough hours in the day to to weave a we i mean it's lovely what i'm doing but but it wasn't the point of coming on to the boat it wasn't to set up a weaving weaving business was it no. <laughs> so we have to be a bit careful because we need to do the things that we normally do living and exploring yeah, um, not get caught up with uh, growing our global weaving painting empire. I don't think we're going to have an empire <laughs> somehow. I don't think Amazon need to be worrying. No. But, <laughs> but it is lovely and we're enjoying it. But you know, that's it. D brighter days are coming. Freedom is round the corner. We'll be cruising and exploring really within weeks, won't we? We will. Yes. Hopefully. So. I like cake. I like cake a lot. And uh, Fran does this easy, no dairy, no egg fruitcake. And fruitcake to me is the cake. There's no other cake but fruitcake. And uh, so people keep asking us, put your recipes in a book, but that's never gonna happen. So what we're going to do is put Fran's easy recipes online on our website. So we're gonna have a new section on the website of Fran's recipes. Now Fran reckons this easy, fruitcake recipe is foolproof and any idiot can do it so uh, let's give it a go I'm gonna do something I've never done before and that's make a cake so here goes so what I've done is I've taken a cup and a half and that's this cup size not this mug size freely available on our website if you just go and have a look and uh, so that's a cup and a half of dried fruit with a cup of Earl Grey tea, hot Earl Grey tea. Now I've left that to mature overnight, anything over two hours apparently, and it's okay to go. So, but the longer you leave it, the better. So that's been left overnight. I'm now gonna add to that half a cup of sugar. It's about half a cup. Uh, a tablespoon of marmalade or jam in this case we're using lemon and lime marmalade because the last time Fran did this um, that works really well and now what I want to do is find a tea tablespoon oh, there's Jean. there she is tablespoon um, what did we say? <laughs> she did say any fork can do this. Uh, one tablespoon of marmalade. Right, so here it goes. And that is that in there. 
one and three quarter cups of self-raising flour. Self-raising flour. One and three quarter cups, that sounds a bit sort of precise, doesn't it? I guess there's an easy way of doing it than this. There's your one dish. Right, and there's your three quarter, one and three quarter cups of self raising flour, and a teaspoon of cinnamon or mixed spice. So we've got ground mixed spice, is what we're using. One teaspoon. Only too spicy, so level that off. Mix fruit and tea with sugar, marmalade, jam, flour, and spice, and stir well. Seems simple enough. Stir well. Is there some fluid supposed to go in this? Do you think? Maybe not. Look at that, that's getting really sort of cake mixture like, who knew? This cooking lark's easy, isn't it? They make it out to be so complicated, them. So out of my comfort zone doing this, this is just bizarre. I've never, I mean, I can cook. <laughs> Well, I very rarely cook because uh, Fran just takes the rain when it comes to cooking dinners, etc. I do the odd pasta and chili and uh, spaghetti bolognese and that sort of thing. But anything more complicated than that, I'm lost. Well, I guess that is, that is to me, looks like a pretty good cake mixture. It's all mixed in really well. And when I started mixing it, I wouldn't have thought um, it'd have ended up like a, in the paste like that. So that's brilliant. That looks very much like a cake mixture. So well, tip into a loaf tin and level the top. So now what I've got here is I've pre-prepared a tin with greaseproof paper lining. And I have to tip this in and level it off, apparently. Anyone want to lick the bowl? So that's that. Level out a bit. I've never even watched Fran do this. She just does this in, in minutes, you know, while I'm reading or something or watching something. And so uh, that is that, apparently. So now we have to preheat an oven, which is already done, to 160 degrees centigrade, which apparently is gas mark three. Don't know what it is in Fahrenheit. So I'm just checking, we've done everything. So you've got to bake for an hour and a quarter. I need to know what the time is, I suppose. Insert into the top. All oh, right, OK. <laughs> So you bake for an hour and a quarter, and like any other cake, you stick a skewer in it. If it comes out clean, it's done. So here it goes. My first cake about to be cooked. Looks like a cake. Smells like a cake. Chances are it is a cake. Oh yeah, that's cooked to a tea, I think. Uh, how do I get that out, friend? <laughs> Just like, like that. that. Wowza, look at that. 
dead chuffed, as you would say, Francis. Good, eh? That actually looks better than the cakes that I make. <laughs> You've got the job <laughs> full time now. As soon as I eat them so. full time. It's brilliant and it's it's just basic ingredients isn't it that we've always got on the boat so that was so easy to do mm. five minute job except for soaking the fruit overnight but the proof is in the pudding as they say yeah should I take a slice out of it no so? half an hour you've got yeah. to let it rest for half an hour so anyway Fran recently has been making what do you call it? <laughs> Sourdough, you keep sourdough bread. I want to say soda bread, but it's sourdough bread. Look at that. That's just fabulous, isn't it? We started making the sourdough starter just after Christmas, so almost New Year's Day, I think. And it took a little while. And we've adapted all the recipes that are out there on the internet to suit us with no fridge and no um, fancy storage solutions on the boat. And I think we've got it down. To a tea now haven't we it looks it's, the bread's fantastic it toasts really well and uh, tastes really good except for sometimes you keep forgetting to put the salt in it don't you I'm getting better at that now it is better if you put salt but in it but with the residue sourdough Fran makes these savoury biscuits there's all sorts of things you have to search, really nice throw a certain amount of the starter away from time to time otherwise it gets too much but I can't bear waste waste in fact, we're going to talk about that on the next um, podcast. podcast. Can you start them off? <laughs> <laughs> I don't waste words either. So, yeah, we just made these little savoury crackers yesterday. Um, to have really with, nice. um, well, we have it with hummus. hummus. yeah, lovely. So, yeah, a morning is baking. That's good. The only trouble is it's baking on here. Oh, it's <laughs> roasting in here today. The sun's come out. Every door and window <laughs> open. <laughs> we had the fire going this morning. It's roasting. <laughs> well done, Mr Pike. Thank you. So this uh, has been a bit of an ed a video to edit. It's been hard work. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's going to be the last video, hopefully, before we launch the boat. So uh, fingers crossed. Yes. Yeah. In a, a week or two, 10 days, 14 days, maybe the boat will be ready. We're beginning to sort out drawers and cupboards and get rid of things that we've... Yeah. Even though it's a tiny space, we've still accumulated stuff that we don't need on here. Yeah, if you were to see this kitchen drawer, the things that are in the kitchen drawer. <laughs> Everyone's got a drawer like it. I don't care what you say. So, yeah, we're at the stage now where we're clearing out, tidying up, getting a little bit organised. Um, so that it's easy. We've got a theory that we might be able to moor the boats hatch to hatch and just pass things through the side Yeah, that's, that's the plan. <laughs> I don't think I don't know. Gonna... We're walking up and down boat steps in and out with boxes, just hand it through the hatch to the next boat. So it's exciting times ahead. Yes. So give us a thumbs up, like and subscribe and um, see you on the next one. Yeah, see you soon.